Praise the Lord, Cornerstone. Would you stand to your feet and clap your hands unto the Lord? Are you thankful to be in the house of God on a Sunday morning? Come on, let's worship Him for a minute. God's ability to bless us far exceeds our ability to give Him praise. But let's try this morning to give Him praise worthy of His great name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Give glory. Well, that's it. Let's clap our hands to a king that died for us, to one that saved us, that created a place and a way for us to get to him. Thank you, Jesus. see the Bible quizzing team is back from another expedition. Brother Knutson, you have the results. Praise the Lord, church. We have been having a blast in the Bible quizzing department. And last week we went to LaGrand, Oregon for our fourth tournament of the year. We were running a little short on quizzers due to some summit fatigue, but we went, we represented Cornerstone well. And in our beginner division, which is ages five through eight, I'd like Xander Mancia, Ezekiel Covarubius, um, Josiah Mancia, and Abraham Covarubius to make their way up to the stage. This is your Northwest first place team in the beginner division. Now, Ezekiel Covarubius also took first place on the all-tournament team for the junior division. And Xander Mancia was our first place overall scorer for the entire tournament in the beginner division. Amen. Going over to the junior division, we had a team of all girls. I'd like Liliana Covarubius and Layla Mancia to make their way up to the front. This team right here. took fourth place overall for the tournament in the Northwest Division. Fourth place. They quizzed their hearts out. And because of that, on second place for the all-tournament all-star team, Liliana Covarubias. And second place for the, for the highest scoring individual for the entire tournament was Layla. Now, Sister Hannah Hartley and Sister Gloria Reed are not here today, but their teammates, Madeline Knutson and Lala Brumfield, come on up. This is your, again, first place team in the senior division. We're starting to make a habit of the first place trophies. This is the fourth consecutive time that they've won first place this year. Sister Hannah Hartley, who's not here today, also took first place individual scorer for the entire tournament. Let's give her a hand. Now we are looking forward to our next tournament, which is in Sacramento, California. We're gonna be bringing at least one team in each division to that tournament. We've got a good chance at that. After that, we've got finals in June, 
and then we will be taking national level teams to nationals tournament in July in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So thank you for your support. God bless you and we'll see you next month. Oh yeah, one more time, let's clap our hands for Bible quizzing. That is a manifestation of right priorities right there. Before we get into our worship slaying mode, why don't we just take a minute, step out in the aisles, greet someone this morning.
clap your hands and lift your voice. shouldn't even be here, but it's the grace and the mercy of God. Come on, get on out of your pew and put your hands together and lift your voice and give God the praise. The devil's on the hand, he thought I was dead, he thought that I would give up and never never stand. The devil's on the hand, he thought I was dead, he thought that I would give up and never never stand. Can you say?
lift your hands and lift your voice to the King Eternal, the only wise God. I would be remiss, I would be remiss if I didn't share this this morning. And I got this word picture as this choir was singing. Some commentator did a report on what happened when that snake came out of the fire and latched on to the Apostle Paul. It was a viper. The Bible calls it a poisonous viper. Scientists have proven that that snake, the longer that it stays connected, the greater your peril. If you know that the devil is latched onto something, why don't you shake it off and shake it off in the fire. Shake it off today. Get it off your mind. Get, Get it off your heart. Get it off your spirit. Get it off your conscience. Get it out of your life. Somebody move. Somebody shake. Somebody quake, somebody move. Come on, everybody. Everybody get your hands in the air. Everybody shake it off. even need to mention how good it feels in the house today. If you can't feel that, get out and shake a little bit. Hallelujah. Man, it feels good in this place today. Amen. We're about to add to the devil's headache. Hallelujah. We have, we like to celebrate those that have been baptized in Jesus' name. It is a big deal. It is an awesome thing. It is a sign of recognition to the obedience of the Word of God. And uh, we want to recognize each and every person that has been baptized recently. And so we have the certificate. Pastor's going to come down here. I'll read off the names. As, as I call your name, if you would come up to the front to see Pastor. So the first is Brother Enoch Flanagan. Brother Ezekiel Hastings. <laughs> Brother Abraham Corva Rubius. Brother Samuel Corvarubius. 
Well, this one is Sister Liliana Corvarubias. Hallelujah. That one's hers. Samuel. Sister Anastasia Oswald. Sister Lyra Damaris. She's right over here. Sister Vondelay Earls. Praise God. Congratulations to all of our baptisms. If you didn't notice, all of those were children from our Sunday school department. Hallelujah. Amen. As Brother Oswald comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Before... Anastasia was baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost this last summit. That was just something under my skin. And they had the most amazing kids conference. And when I walked over to pick her up and she was speaking in tongues, my heart melted. And then she got baptized and now I said, that's it. I've seen all I need to see. It is so amazing what God will do. sing one more worship song before we move into the announcements. Let's worship together.
my giants fall when you stand undefeated cause every battle you've won I am who you say I am cause you crown me with confidence I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the world of God. As the ushers come to the front, Tuesday evening, 7 p.m., service right here, 6.30 for prayer, all church prayer, Wednesday, 7 p.m. If you're visiting with us, you should have received a visitor's card. The ushers have them. If you did not, please grab one, fill it out, turn it into the coffee shop for a free drink. But today, if you're visiting with us, please stay after service. We have a special meal prepared for you. It's already taken care of. Just walk through those doors. Sit down, have lunch. It's on the house today. Fellowship with us. We would be so blessed if you would stay and be our guests. And the whole church said, amen. And for lunch, we're having chicken teriyaki, fried rice, egg roll, drink, and dessert. And that is to support the baptism ministry. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for the offering. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for your great presence that we feel undeserved, Lord. As we give back some of what you've given to us, Lord, bless it to the furthering of your kingdom and for your great name's sake. And the whole church said, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship as we give this morning. Yeah. 
What an incredible environment. If we follow the sequence of Genesis chapter number one, and we overlay that with what's taking place every time we get together, we have the ability through spiritual enablement, and power to create an environment. Not a terrestrial environment, not a physical environment, not a fleshly environment. But the church has been empowered and permitted 
to establish the parameters. And I believe in its fullness, we can be sitting in heavenly places. That although we're here, all of us entrapped by gravity and the limitations of the 21st century, week after week, we join together and we create an environment where anything is possible. Let's lift our hands. Nothing is too hard. Come on, let's really praise him. Let's really praise him. If you're feeling what I'm feeling, let's praise him. Come on, we're told to rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. And let's praise God with them that praise God and worship God with them that worship God. Yes. Yes. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. It's great to see all of our, it's great to see everybody here today. Um, am I the only one that's feeling especially excited about 80 degree weather. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd hate to think that the weatherman is a boogeyman, but man, it's been a long time coming. We're going to have a great time this summer in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. It's great to have our visitors with us. Let's give them a cornerstone welcome in Jesus' name. God bless each and every one of you. Brother Oswald already mentioned here this morning that immediately following the altar call, uh, the baptismal ministry of Cornerstone has provided, you know, I don't like to talk about food because it, 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 it diverts my attention. But it's going to be, I've been told, I've been given a little heads up, Pastor, it's going to be really good today. So I'm just going to pass along a little heads up. It's going to be really good today. So if you're visiting with us, uh, we want you to just come back and join us. Uh, your, uh, your meal has already been taken care of. We're just delighted that you're, that you're with us. And uh, we're going to have a great time in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why don't, you, why don't you just turn to your neighbor and shake their hands and say, I'm glad you're standing with me today. I'm glad we're in the Holy Ghost today. I'm glad we're in church together today. Whew. Several months ago, Several months ago, we felt we felt that we needed to have Brother Marks come in on a regular basis um, for the foreseeable future. And so he has consented to come in the last Sunday, Super Sunday, of every month for the rest of the year. Brother Marks, yes. Brother Marks has, his ministry has left an indelible print not only on the Northwest, but on Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. And we're very thankful unto God for his ministry. We're delighted that he's here. Let's put our hands together unto the Lord for the man of God as he comes. Do you have any idea how blessed you are? And speaking, um, 
as someone who has uh, traveled abroad. Um, July will be 24 years. I beg you, don't ever take this for granted. tell you what came to mind it's probably this stage of life that I'm in but I stood here basking in the presence of the Lord and I thought a thought that came to me is uh, what what a place to raise a family what a place to raise a family I, I use this word very carefully, but man, if you're looking for a way out of here, uh, you need to reconsider. <laughs> what, a, what a place to raise a family. What an environment for these children and these young people. And, and um, I know the bad stigmas that come with being an evangelist. I get it. And I know you think we say the same things everywhere. Not me. Um, you can follow the recordings and you'll know. But I, I just feel like you, we could just go straight to heaven right from here today. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. And I, I want to say something. I've, I've never said this before. I have not. But in study in the last couple of weeks, and the Mayos were the first people that came to mind, I've been extensively um, just pouring over the Old Testament priesthood um, for obvious reasons. So much figuratively that connects to you and I. But in looking at that, one, there was a statement that was made that the, one, of the, the great, one of the main objectives of the Old Testament priesthood was to bring heaven to earth. Now, I had seen that before, but I found where someone else added something to that. Not only is it their responsibility to bring heaven to earth, but it's the responsibility of the priesthood to keep heaven on earth. And when I read that, immediately, uh, Brother and Sister Mayo came to my mind. Uh, because these are, these are people, these, these are, these, in my opinion, and I'm probably biased, but these are some of God's greatest and no, 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 no. And all since 1994, they've not only worked to bring the kingdom of God and to bring heaven to the Northwest, but day in and day out, these people work and labor to keep it here. And you and I are the beneficiaries of that. Would you honor your leaders right now? Praise God. To say that I'm excited to be here is an understatement, and I'm so looking forward to this, and I um, uh, love this church, and, um, and, and love the Mayo family so much, and um, on, tap, on top of that, I get to spend time with my, my little man, Brave, and uh, we, we love Jared and Ari, too, but, but, but Brave, he's the... He's the, the main thing. Praise God. No. Praise God. Matthew chapter 12. Um, to all the self-righteous people, you're going to be highly offended today. Um, to all the perfect people and all of you that have it all together, you may want to go ahead and see if they're serving food early. Um, because I'm going to offend you today. 
But to you that are striving to, to get it together, uh, that's, that's who I'm going to preach to. And um, much of what I preach, um, I love people. And man, I just, I want to get it right. I want to get it right. Something came to me praying the other day. God's not looking for people that are sinless. But he does want us to sin less. And that's what I'm working at. And, and I'm, I'll never be above saying I'm sorry, but if God will help me, I want to have to say it less. Matthew chapter 12. But much of what I preach is inspired by my journey and then also the journey. I love people and it's watching the journey of others. I can't stand to see people that I really believe have a deep love for God struggle. And so I am a student of people patterns and um, well I, I believe I have biblical premise behind this I, I think much of David's psalms were inspired from his journey but I believe some of them were inspired as he watched the journeys of others and um, so this was born in the last year my burden and prayer for people that I love that I just want to see make it. I want to see you make it. Praise God. Matthew chapter 12. And I'd like to begin reading at verse number 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Would you turn and look at somebody and say, This is Jesus saying this. That's, that's red. That's, those are red letters in my Bible. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The man of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. Now, I'm kind of an abstract thinker but I'd like to draw a subject out of this last line here. Jesus said, somebody say, Jesus said, and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Jesus said, behold, a greater than Jonah is here. I don't know what you think I might preach from that, but I want to come at that from a little bit different angle. Now, I'm going to give you my title, and I want you to just think about a minute. I want to preach for the next little while from this thought. Jesus said Jonah was great. Think about it a second. He did say there's one here that's greater than Jonah. But you understand by Jesus saying there's one here greater than Jonah that Jesus was saying Jonah was great. I want to preach this afternoon from that thought for a few moments. Jesus said Jonah was great. If you would, would you lay down your Bible or your device, whatever you're reading off of? Would you pick up the hand of someone, if it's appropriate, next to you? 
Let's not do this tritely or out of tradition, but would you lift your voice and pray that God would help us here in the next little bit. Come on, one more time. Lift your voice and pray that God's Word would find its way into the heart Come on, would somebody pray with some fervency? Come on, would you pray with some fervency? Would you pray with some fervency? Pray that God's word would have free course into the hearts of men. If you believe that the word of the Lord's going to make a difference today, would you just thank him for it before you're seated? Just thank him in anticipation for it right now. Praise God. You can be seated. I take great consolation. I lean. I lean into strongly. I lean into heavily. I, I depend on portions of Scripture where men are willing to open themselves up and speak transparently. The Apostle Paul, who would go on to write between half and two-thirds of the New Testament, it's in the Pauline epistles oftentimes that I find myself being consoled by those transparent moments. Scholars say, contribute somewhere between 15 and 20 church plants before the Apostle Paul was said and done. The amazing thing was not just the 15 to 20 churches that he was directly responsible for, but the Apostle Paul left the DNA of a movement that would literally undermine the Roman Empire as it was in those days. He was a theologian par excellent. The Apostle Paul was a powerful man, but it's those transparent texts that I lean hard into when the Apostle Paul says things like this. He said, he said, I, and I paraphrase, but it's, it's a struggle. In fact, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. These are not words that speak of a cakewalk. In fact, if you lean in and hear the tone of the text, you can sense the struggle. The Apostle Paul is the one that said in the fight, with this flesh, he said, it's those things that I don't want to do that I do. And, and, and it's the things that I want to get done that somehow I'm, I'm, I'm never able to quite accomplish. He said that. The Apostle Paul said that. It's the Apostle Paul who spoke of being saved. Listen now, there's nothing to be confused about. But he spoke about being saved in all three tenses. 
He spoke of salvation as something that had happened in the past. But he also spoke of salvation as something coming in the future. But again, I take comfort in the fact that the Apostle Paul also spoke of being saved as something, being an ongoing Ladies and gentlemen, I get what we mean. I understand the apostolic vernacular, but salvation is not a day on the calendar. Salvation is not a day on the calendar. Salvation is not made of one moment singularly. It's a process. Are you hearing me right now? Come on, it's not one moment, but salvation is made up of lots of moments. It's a moment I had, come on, at five and a half when I talked in tongues for the first time, but it was a moment that I had at 10, and a moment I had at 12, and a moment that I had. As long as there's flesh on these bones, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to fight this flesh. Come on. The fight with this flesh is one that will not end until you draw your last breath. Praise God. Come on. And so the essence of living for God is this. Hallelujah. I'm not where I want to be. Thank God I'm not where I was. Come on. But I'm not staying here. Come on. I'm going to grow in God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In fact, in fact, I am thankful tonight or this afternoon rather that God, that he judges on a trajectory. I'm thankful that God doesn't use the metric systems of man. I'm thankful when it comes time to measure me up. Come on, that God uses a different ruler. He uses a different yardstick than we use with one another. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm thankful for his mercy. I'm thankful for his grace. I'm thankful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. I take great consolation. In fact, I know I'm kind of weepy, but I lost it the other day. I was sitting in a class, an Old Testament class that I'm taking, and I, I'm thankful that I was by myself. But the, uh, the, the teacher that was in that particular class was talking about Joshua, and he, and he brought up the text that we're all so familiar with. Uh, as for me, come on, say, somebody say, as for me. As for me and my house, we will serve serve the Lord. But what the professor brought up in that class was that Joshua was no young man when he made that statement. He said the writer there was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 years old. And I started weeping. You know why I started weeping? Come on. It's a decision I made it at, at five and a half. Come on. But when I get 80, come on, I'm going to still be saying, as for me, as for me, Come on. I don't know how many years ago you got the Holy Ghost, but I want to know, is there any as for me people in this house? Come on. Are there any as for me people in this house? I've been around here a long time. Come on. But as for me. A few weeks ago, trying to help a preacher's kid. We had a little moment. I said to him, I said, it's not what happens to us. I said, it's what happens to what happens to us. Did you learn from it? Come on, God uses a different metric system. Did you learn from it? A righteous man is not defined by the absence of falls. 
I told you, I'm going to highly offend. Come on, if there's any Pharisees here today, come on. It's going to be a miserable year for you on the last Sunday of every month. Come on. Come on. Micah asked, what does it take to please God? Come on. He gave three things. Walk justly. Come on, come on. And he said, love, mercy. You got a preacher on your, all of us here today. If it wasn't for the mercies of God, come on, none of us would be here. I shouldn't even have to say this. Of course, I'm not talking to people who are iniquitous. I'm not talking to people that are hell-bent on being rebellious. I'm not talking about premeditated sin and people that just have no desire to live for God. But I am preaching to those, come on, that are here. And if you're here today, I'm going to assume there is some level of desire there that you want to be saved and you want to make it. Brother Mayo, when I think of Jesus bringing up Old Testament prophets, I can think of a whole lot of other prophets. <laughs> Y'all going to help me preach this here today that Jesus would have brought up before Jonah. Well, apparently, I'm missing something here, my mail. Somewhere I'm missing something. We, 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 me and God and I, we're missing. You're talking about a different Jonah, apparently. In fact, if I were to have polled this gathering here today and ask you to tell me your five top Old Testament prophets, come on, you guys, and prophets that prevailed, prophets that were great, I can guarantee you there wouldn't have been there wouldn't have been a list in this building that would have had Jonah anywhere in the top five. Oh, you're not going to help me right now. In fact, there's not any of you, there are very few of you that it would have even came to your mind that Jonah was a prophet, let alone a great one. But thank God, Jesus sees things differently than you and I see things. Thank God that the metric system of heaven is different than man. Come on, I don't want to get the cart in front of the horse, but I got to pull over here and preach to somebody right now. You're doing better than you think you're doing. You can make it. Come on, you can make it. You can live holy. You can be an overcomer. You can. Jesus said there was one greater here. And Jonah, again, I know I think abstractly, but for Jesus to say there was one greater, Jesus is saying that Jonah was great. In fact, of all of the men that he could have reached back and pulled something from their life, I'll come back to this before I'm finished. Jesus likens his death. He likens his burial to that of Jonas. Jonah? Jesus, really? Isaiah, I get it. Nehemiah? Oh. I could understand if you said there was one here greater than Nehemiah. I mean, think about the sacrifices that Nehemiah made. Think of God. Samuel. Oh, I would have, that scripture would have never stopped me. The barbs, come on, the barbs of that word would have.
have never found themselves lodged in my spirit. I'd have never had another, I'd have never had a second thought if you'd have said there's one here greater than Nehemiah or Isaiah or Samuel. Come on, think about Samuel. You're hard to find. Come on, it's hard. You'll be hard to find to put a stain. Come on, on Samuel or the journey of Samuel. There wasn't a word that came out of his mouth that fell to the ground. But Jesus is not talking about Isaiah. He's not talking about Samuel. He's not talking about Nehemiah. He's not talking. There's no Ezekiel here. He says Jonah. 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 Jesus. Surely we're talking about two different people. Now just, just a little tidbit of something for you to think about. When it's all said and done, his name is given to one of the 66 books of the Bible. No, I told you, stick, come on, I'm, I'm giving you permission to do that childish thing, you self-righteous thing, you just stick your fingers in your ears right now and go la 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 because you're not gonna like this. Not only was one of the books of the Bible named after him, his story is contained in that book. Get ready, brace yourself. But there was not a more effective evangelist ever in Scripture. No, you're not ready for this. Brother Sergeant, brace yourself. Not even Jesus. <laughs> Multitudes walked away from Jesus. Everybody in Nineveh repented from the king all the way down when Jonah got through preaching. He's still working on me <laughs> to make me what I ought to be. We're not talking about the same Jonah. Surely, Jesus. I pulled it back up because I remembered something that I had took a screenshot of as I read through the book of Jonah. Jonah 1. See if you catch this. Jonah 1. And three says that, the, that he flees from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found a ship. Jonah 1 and 5, but Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship. Jonah 2 and 6 says, and I went down down to the bottoms of the mountains of the earth. Come on. This is a man, when I read his life, it's down, down, down. Now, thank God for all you super obedient people, come on, that don't have any, you don't have, you don't have an ounce of hard-headedness. And the first time the word of the Lord came, come on, let's put a pin on your lapel. Come on, you answered and you obeyed. But the Bible says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Jesus said, Jonah was great. This was a man, if you go study it, that came from a solid family. This is a man that compromised everything that had been invested in him. This is a man that said no to God. This is a man that didn't know how to face his demons, didn't know how to face his internal issues, and instead of standing up to the internal battle, Jonah is a man that thought running from God would fix it. Jesus said, Jonah, was great. This is a man that told you no. This is a man that went down, 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 down. This is a man that turned his back. This is a man that when, the, when he got under pressure, that he fled from the presence of God. Come on, is anybody hearing me right now? This is a man, come on, because of his running, caused great disruption in the lives of others. 
come on I've been praying for you and the Holy Ghost gave me this word in my prayers for you and your journey come on but when it's all said and done hundreds and hundreds of years later come on Jesus is trying to think of a great prophet come on it's not Isaiah that comes to mind it's not Ezekiel that comes to mind it's not Nehemiah that comes to mind it's Jonah He runs. He calls us. He calls us other people. He calls us disruption in their life. He calls us the boat, come on, that others was on. He brings storms, come on. Jonah, down, down, down. Jonah runs from God. Jonah has to stand there and eventually admit, I'm the reason for the storm. I'm the reason for the disruption. I'm sorry for all the things that you've thrown overboard. Come on, to keep this ship from sinking. But I'm the one in rebellion. Jonah is the one that's thrown over. All of the things that God could have created. All of the things that God could have used his time to create. But God specifically designs a fish for Jonah. Jonah's the one that's trying to keep his nose above the fluids of this animal. Apparently, it took some convincing. He's got a hard head because it wasn't something that happened immediately. Jonah's the one that described this place. And when he really got down to the nitty-gritty, he said, there's seaweed wrapped around my neck. I feel like it's choking the life out of me. Come on. He said, it's the bars. He spoke of the bars. He spoke of that dark place as being like hell. But out of all of that, he makes this statement, and it gets very little attention. But I'm going to preach this right now, Elder Sergeant. He said, lie and vanities and forsaken mercies that was born out of the belly of that well. Can I give you an interpretation? Good old Northwest vernacular. You know what Jonah was saying? Come on. If I lay here and listen to the lies of the enemy, I'm going to forsake the mercies of God. I want somebody to understand that his mercies are here and they're for you, but you've got to let go of lie and vanities. Stick your fingers in your ears, because here comes some more. Oh, I just seen all the Pharisees right there. There's some others that ought to be on the edge of your seat right now. He's preaching my story. Man, if if Jonah could find his way into God's greats, I'm preaching to somebody that would have never imagined before this moment that somehow your name could find its way on a list of God's greats. He's an effective evangelist. One of the 66 books of the Bible is named after him. It contains his story. But here's here's some more consolation for you. Come on. When it's all said and done and and Jonah gets his act together, come on. Listen to what I'm telling you. Come on. When he gets his act together, he still doesn't have his act all the way together. Because the end of the book, God's still chiding him. You know what that means? That means that you don't have ever you don't have to be everything yet that God has predestined for you to be. Come on, to be something for God. You didn't hear what I just said. I'm going to say it again. You don't have to be everything yet that God has predestined for you to be. Come on, to be great in the eyes of God. God God said as long as you're striving for the mark. Come on.
So why would he call Jonah great? Come on. God, I'm trying to figure out your metric systems as you measure man. This is, a, this is a man who ran. This is a man that caused pain in other people's lives. This is a man that just seemed like it was down, down, down. He was a runner. He couldn't get his act together. Jesus, how in the world do you deem a man like this great? Come on. I'm not far from being done. I've come to preach it to you right now, though. You know how God deems a man that's great? Come on. It's a man who eventually gets it together. Now, I'm going to back up and tell you again. Why did Jesus say that Jonah was great? It wasn't because Jonah, come on, was great. It was because Jonah was striving for greatness. I want to tell somebody how to find yourself on God's great list. Come on. You got to keep fighting. You got to keep struggling. You got to keep working. You got to keep praying. You got to keep building altars. You got to keep repenting. You got to keep saying, I'm sorry. Jesus said, I think he's great, not because he's got it all together, but I think he's great because he kept working at trying to get it all together. I had somebody for no reason try to run me off the road on the way here today. Just me and Jesus smiling, having a good time. Come on. I'm just telling you right now, I'm not over-spiritualizing. I don't think we have a problem over-spiritualizing things. I don't think we spiritualize enough things. Come on, the devil didn't want me getting here today and delivering this word. You're your, you're, you're your own worst enemy. Come on. You're beating yourself up. Come on. Nobody here's beating you up. God's not beating you up. You're not a stepchild. You're not a bastard. You're not without a father. You're not without a people. Come on. you got to let yourself up, honey. Come on. God thinks you're great just because you're here today God says that's great just because you made it we take our measuring stick and we go they left yeah. sister Mayo God takes his measuring stick and goes they came back I need somebody. Do you love people? Do you love the prodigals in this church? Do you love the strugglers in this church? Do you love the people on the peripheral of this church? You know what we do, Elder Sergeant? We whip out our ruler and we say, ah, they failed. And God says, they found forgiveness. You know what we do? We pull out our self-righteous ruler, Dave, and we go, they ran. Come on. And God says, get that mess out of here. And God pulls out his ruler, Jake, and he said, they're redeemed. They're forgiven. Come on. They're safe. They're back in the Father's house. God does not define greatness. A righteous man is not defined by the absence of errors. God wants to know, do you know how to get back up? Do you know how to get back up? Do you know how to recover yourself? Do you know how to... God, great. And God says, yeah. My measurement of greatness. Do they know how to get up? Incredible preaching. Brother Marks, it took two words. He still got there. Brother Marks, he had feet that are swift to run. Okay. But eventually those same feet that were swift to run got swift. 
They were swift to run in the wrong direction. But those same feet, when God finally got through their thick head, those same feet that were swift to run the wrong direction were swift to run the right direction. cursed. He denied. He denied that he would deny. He was the first preacher of Pentecost. I'd say he's probably great. First and second Peter, I'd say God in the end probably would have deemed him as great. But he was a hot mess, brother. He kept a, he kept a sandal strap, come on, between his teeth. He was always saying the wrong thing. But I'm going to tell you this about Simon Peter. When given a second chance, come on, and let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and debunk a diabolical lie. I'm not talking about second in a literal sense. A second chance, I'm speaking metaphorically. A second chance could mean 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 20. It doesn't matter how, how many times did they come back to the altar. I don't care. Come on. Did they come back again? Come on. Did they come back again? Did they get their hands up again? Did they pray again? You said he's great. And you not only said he's great, I'm hurrying to close. You not only said he's great. <laughs> Something as holy as your burial. You better not quit. You better not even, don't even sit down and entertain that. Yeah, but I still got this little deal over here. and I still got. We all still got these little deals. Come on. But I got this big deal. And I'm not going to let all these little deals, come on, get my focus off the big deal. Come on. Because as long as I'm loving the big deal and serving the big deal and crying out to the big deal, guess what? The big deal is going to help me work out all the little deals. I said, something as holy as your burial. And it's like the Lord said, now you're on to it. Now you're starting to understand how you get on God's great list. Jonah was great. But Jonah was great in the context of the burial of Jesus Christ. Some things have to die. And some things have to be buried. And a great part of the greatness in which God can deem a man When it all comes down to it, it's not the things that come up, First Lady. It's not the mistakes. It's not the humanity. Well, I got humanity. I can't, I'll never find my way onto God's great list. No. 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 It's, he said, he was in the belly of a whale. And he likened the belly of the whale to the Son of Man being in a cave. God, you can still have things alive in you that you're working on and be great as long as God sees you constantly going through the process of dying to those things. No, 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 listen. It's illegal for somebody to die. It's illegal for somebody to die and not bury them. Do you know how to put things behind you? Very good. Very good. 
Do you know how to put it? We are our own worst enemies. Shame and condemnation. Come on. Conviction. You need to understand. I went and started listing things. It's for another time and another place. But there's a lot of big differences between conviction and condemnation. I will tell you one, though. Come on. Conviction, there's hope. Condemnation will tell you there's no hope. Conviction will tell you there's a way out. Condemnation will tell you there's never a way out. Come on. God says, my greatness, your greatness, come on, I define it. Do you know how to die to things? And do you know how to put things away? Do you know how to put the past behind you? I made the mistake. Be quick to agree with your adversary. I should have never done it. I did it, but I'm not dwelling on the failures of yesterday. Come on. I'm pressing towards the mark. I'm going forward in God. I'm This is the first place publicly I've ever mentioned this. Are you ready? You ready? What happened when the body was in the cave? The Bible says that he went to hell. And he took, give me the keys, give me the keys. It's in the cave. Oh, my God. I'm going to blow up right now. It's in the cave. And I figured out why some people never get the keys that hell has hung over their head. They never find the keys to their own liberty. They never find the keys to their own peace and joy. Come on. Because the cave, the keys, the keys over hell to take the the things that the enemy's weaponizing over you. The only way to take the keys from hell, there's got to be a cave in your life. And I'm telling somebody right now, if you'll die out to the memories of yesterday and bury it, come on, I did it, but God forgave me. I messed up. Come on, but God's mercy. Come on, if you will read If you will receive mercy, it's there in the cave that you take the keys of hell and the grave. And I found out, Brother Earl, forgive me, it's a rough draft. This is the first time I've ever used this part right here. I find out why so few people ever get the keys from hell and the grave. It's because we're not very good at burying things. We'll die to it. We'll even get forgiveness for it. But lying vanities are forsaken mercies. And when when you make the decision to put it to bed. He said in the belly, as the son of man was in the earth for three days. Jonah, let me tell you something. Jonah, in the belly of that well, not only made his mind up to go to Nineveh, he made his mind up to not go in his mind to the mistakes that had landed him in the position that he was in. (laughs) Forgetting those things, the power to press forward, the access to that are the keys that one gets when they can bury things they've been forgiven of. Well, I thought baptism took care of all of that. And I'm not taking away from the power of baptism. But ladies and gentlemen, you've got to have more than just a watery grave. You've got to daily baptize this mind. That's why the apostle Paul said, daily I die. Why is he dying daily? Because Paul's got a Passover come. He's got innocent blood on his hands. But he said, as long as the past stays in a cave, I've got the keys over hell, the grave. Come on, Jordan. Jesus said, Jonah was great. It's not how long it took you to get there. 
Did you manage to get there? Did you never, when a person never loses the desire? Brother Marks, I just don't know about that. Then you know what you better do? Then you better omit the biggest bulk of the Old Testament. Because it's the story of not just people. It's the story of his people that turned a 10-day journey into 40 years. Something hit me again. I'm just trying to get through it. I'm not, I'm not where I want to be. But I'm sure not where I could be if I wasn't hard after him. He said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. And in an irrational moment, Simon reaches up and takes a man's ear off. God, if you could only believe in your destiny as much as he believes in it. I'm sorry, but Jesus didn't reach down in the dust and grab the ear of that Roman soldier and put it back on his head to save that Roman soldier's image. He put the ear back on the head of that Roman soldier to preserve the destiny of Simon Peter. That could have ended up in his death. Brother Mark, are you condemning sin? That's not, you missed my point. I've already said I gave a disclaimer. I'm not talking about people that are just hell-bent on being rebellious. I'm talking about people that are struggling. Hey, we got we to gotta quit making struggle in the church a byword. But I noticed when he did that, Jesus didn't say, Simon Peter, give me those keys. He gave them to him. I don't know him. I don't know. I don't. I mean, he's doing everything in his power to disassociate. And Simon, through the smoke of the fire of the Nile, he never sees Jesus reach out his hand and says, I want those keys back. Why? Because I believe he knew, understood deep down Simon Peter had a desire. Did he? Oh, I think Simon Peter had thought a hundred times and rehearsed in his mind what he would do if he was given a second chance. And him and some comrades are on a boat and they look up and there's a man flipping a fish. <laughs> John said, it's, it's him, it's, it's the master. And Simon Peter, before they could even dock the boat, bails out of the boat into the water. And if you could have read, if you could have read the thoughts of Jesus, I think he kind of smiled and said, that's great. That's great. That's great. He grieves when we fall. He grieves when we land flat, hard. But when a man gathers himself, a righteous man falls seven times. 
His righteousness is not defined by how many times he falls. His righteousness is defined. Not even, not even, it's not even defined by how many times he gets up. No. It's defined by how many times he gets up in relation to how many times he falls. And there's a big difference. He said he's righteous because his response every time when he fell was to get back up. Yeah, he ran. He told me no. He caused a great disruption in other people's lives. Yeah, the whale. And but I see the smile on the face of Jesus because he believes in us so much. He said, Jonah was great. He was great because when he was faced with all the hard facts, he accepted my mercy and went ahead and decided to do what I called him to do. Oh, it was, it was a process getting him there, but he got there eventually. <laughs> Brother Marks, you're making grace cheap. Well, you better get you a different preacher. Because that's the only reason I'm here. You just got to get back up and dust yourself off again. If this is not a principle that runs consistently through Scripture, then explain to me why when you read the book of Hebrews, the hall of, we have coined the hall of faith, you explained to me why Samson was mentioned there. And you can talk about, Brother Earl, you can talk about all of the missed opportunities of Samson. You can talk about it, and, there, and you'd be right. You can talk about everything he could have done, everything he should have done, but you can't argue with the fact that he's mentioned among the faith's heroes. Why? Because it took him to right to the end. But he did finally manage to get it together. God said, that's great. Oh, I'm not taking away. You, you come and go and come and go and come and go. There's a price to pay. Come on. They made sport of him. He lost his eyes. There's a price to pay. If you just, but I'm telling you, God still thinks it's great. With no eyes in his head. With no eyes in his head. With no eyes in his head. And the Philistines making sport of him. Come on. Come on. He's mentioned in the hall of faith. Come on. Because Samson, he had, he had the audaciousness to believe that God could touch him one more time. Come on. Come on. He got up one more time. Brother Marks, I can't see. I can't see. I don't care if you can see or not can see. If you, if you have enough gumption to make up in your mind to get up one more time. the faith he told Simon Peter he said I prayed for you watch me now I'm closing with this I prayed for you Kyle I prayed for you that you fail not is that what he said huh did he say I prayed for you is that what he said Jake that you fail not he said I prayed that you your faith fell out. Faith in what? The faith to still believe that God can forgive. The faith to believe that he'll take me back. I've prayed, Simon Peter, you're going to fall flat of your face, but I pray that you don't lose your faith. That I have faith in you. The greatest failure that a man will ever commit is when he loses faith in God's faith in him. When you lose faith in God's faith in you, 
That's the end of the road. And that's what Jesus said. I know what's coming, Simon. You're fixing to make a mess of your life. But if somehow you can have faith that I can forgive you. So you know what I've been praying? I've been praying in this service that your faith in God's faith in you could be restored. Brother Marks, I don't see how you can keep believing in people. I'm sorry. One time. Well, what about that scripture? My spirit will not always strive with man. Sister, I've been doing this a long time. I've looked in the eyes of only one person. Come on. That, the, that, that maybe, maybe. But the maybe was because he had convinced himself. It was not because God had taken his hands off of him. It was because he convinced himself that God had taken his hands off of him. I believe that if a man's not dead, God's not done. I believe he'll reach to the last minute. I believe he'll reach to the last second. I believe until you got, come on, until your last breath. I believe in you. I'm not going to stop believing in you. Come on. But at some point, you got to start believing in his belief in you. Come on. you got to be convinced. Come on. God's still convinced. She's my girl. He's my boy. I love him as much as I've ever loved him. Come on. My hand's still on him. And I'm going to keep working at it, Brother Mayo. Because God knows. I'm going to make myself a little vulnerable right here. God knows how I feel about me. God knows how you feel about you. And I'm going to keep striving. And I'm going to keep fighting. And I'm going to keep forgiving and receiving forgiveness. And I'm going to keep praying, and I'm going to keep building altars. And I'm going to keep getting up, and I'm going to keep putting one foot in front of the other. And hopes that if Jonah was great, with all of my idiosyncrasies, with all of my inferiority complex, with all of my insecurities, with all of my hang-ups, with all of my issues, with all of the past, with all of the stuff, my hope is... I didn't get there as quick as I wanted to get there. Think about it in the sense of children. If it takes them 18 months to walk, we're not condemning them because they didn't walk at 11 months. We're just glad that they're walking. Should Jonah had gone the first time? Absolutely. In a perfect world. You got an old man pinning some of his last words. Just like Joshua. He's exemplifying the persevering spirit. He said, lest I myself become a castaway. If you're deemed, if you are deemed great, if you find yourself on God's great list, it's going to be because all the way to the end, you're doing homework on this humanity. <laughs> the last thing, some of the last words that Jesus used strength to utter was, Father, forgive them. Come on, that's God in flesh. If you make it, if you finish, Sister Sergeant, one of the last things we're going to be doing is forgiving somebody. Jesus doesn't say, my goodness, haven't you got to the place that you don't get offended anymore? No. He's going to say, they forgave one more time. That's great. They got up one more time. That's great. They went to the altar one more time. That's great. You 
You can't argue with the effectiveness of Jonah. Thank God he doesn't wait to where everything we ought to be to use us. Lion vanities, forsaken mercies. Brother Marks, I'm just telling you, throw your righteous ruler away. Because the very fact that you're here today, God's going. That's great. Would you reach over? Please be respectful. Please, this is a holy moment. I don't want the dove to leave. Reach over and connect with somebody. And pray. Lift your voice and pray that God's word. Oh, God. Oh, God. You can make it. All right. You got to preach in tweetable phrases now or people don't listen to you. <laughs> so the issue is not that you caved. In fact, I may just preach that one time. The issue is not that you caved. The, the issue today is do you have a cave? Do you know? Do you know how to die to that and bury it? When he came out of that fish, he left the failures in the fish. Lying vanities or forsaken mercy. Left it in the cave. The keys to hell and the grave. <laughs> I don't even know where to start, Brother Marks. Okay, I'm gonna help you. I prayed because I knew that was gonna come up. I don't know where to start. All right, I'm gonna help you. I, pr I prayed about how to help you know where to start. Okay, ready? It's one word. Ready? Yes. That's it. That's where to start. I don't have to know what that entails. I don't, have, I, don't have to, I don't have to let my mind run a million miles an hour. I don't know what that requires. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and calculate the cost of all of that. I don't know what that looks like for the next three months, the next six months, the next six years. I'm just telling you, this is where you start. Yes. No, never brought down a wall. No, never broke a chain. No, never seen the word of God come to pass. Is anybody hearing me right now? No, never helped anybody overcome. No, never helped anybody come out. Come on. No, are you hearing what I'm telling you? God's looking for a yes. Yes. Yes, God. Yes. Yes brings down walls. Yes breaks chains. I need somebody to help me in closing. Come on, add this thing up. I said yes. Yes is what will help you overcome. Yes, sir. You want to dig yourself out? Come on, get a yes in your mouth. Come on. You want to get past all this? Get a yes in your spirit. You want the chains? 
stop saying no and start saying yes. Come on. That doesn't mean you have to have it all together. Yes. That doesn't mean you understand everything. Yes. I say yes. you stand? I pray for the faith, the healing of your personal faith. In Jesus' name, I pray that your wounded faith Faith in God, faith in yourself, faith in others, faith in your future, your faith in forgiveness. I pray that a healing would begin right now. I've never prayed this prayer, but I'm asking Spokane to touch and agree with me right now. You know how to pray. No, no. This is the first time I ever remember getting anybody to help me pray this publicly. I want you to pray that somebody could have a moment right now and realize how much God loves them. Would you, would you lift your voice and help me pray that right now? God, I pray that somebody would have a moment right now that their eyes could be open, that God is for them and not against them. The restoration of faith in forgiveness. The restoration of faith in the future. I don't feel anything. You don't want to mess with me today. I feel like God has loaded me and I'm going to unload this. I don't feel anything. Let me tell you something. Come on, you got to say yes. Come on, even if you don't feel anything, the, fe the feelings will come. Come on, just say yes to God. The feelings will come back. Just say yes to God. I don't have to know. All right, I'm opening this altar. Here's how I'm opening it. Listen, if you're here and you say, I'm going to make it, one way or another, I'm going to make it. We get 500 people to do that here today, and heaven's liable to just. No, I, I need you that say, with all your stuff, with all your baggage, with all your issues, the hot mess that you are. But you say, I am going to make it. One way or another. I wish you'd look at somebody and tell somebody right now. One way or another. One way or another, I'm going to make it. You hear me, Brother Chris? One way or another, I'm going to make it. One way or another. Come on. Five months from now, I'm going to be living for God. One way or another. Come on. One way or another, I'm going to make it. One, one way or another. One way or another, I'm going to be the man God wants me to be. One way or another, I'm going to be the woman God wants me to be. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but one way or another. If you're here, that ought to be every breathing being in this place. I don't want you to worry about anybody right now but yourself. If that's you, thank you. Come on. I want you to come down here. I'm on one way or another, I'm going to make it. One way or another, I'm going to make it. One way or another, I'm going to make it. Pray for the restoration of faith. God sent me to Spokane this first weekend, and I'm looking forward to all the ones that are going to follow. 
but he sent me here this first weekend to pray for the restoration of faith, faith to forgive, faith in the future. Lift your hands right now by the authority of the Word of God. By the authority, boy, I feel there's a Holy Ghost anointing on me right now. Come on. By the anointing, every bit of anointing you vested in me, God, I pray that a resurrection of faith, faith in your future, faith in God's love for you, faith, come on, faith, faith in your future, faith in God's ability to forgive, faith in your gifts, faith in your talents, faith in your abilities, faith faith in God's faith in you. I pray that a restoration, I know it's been hurt, but I pray a healing would come right now. You can make it. You can be an overcomer. You can be used of God. You can get over this. You can come out of this. You can, I, mean, I can. I didn't come with a can't today. I came with a can. I, I didn't come with a no today. I came with a yes. Brother Marks, the down, the down, the down. But Brother Marks, the running. But Brother Marks, the fish. But Brother Marks, the past. But Brother Marks, the mistakes. No, Jesus said you're great. I want you to do something with me. We're gonna, I'm going to let this thing go. They're fixing to sing. I want you to take somebody. And look them right in the eyes. Don't you do this lightly. I want you to tell them with the same conviction I'm preaching with. I want you to look them in their eyes and tell them, Jesus thinks you're great. He thinks you're great. Tell them. He thinks you're great. Tell them. Tell somebody else. He thinks you're great. He thinks you're great. Oh, Brother Mark's the mistakes. Oh, Saint of God, the mercy. Oh, the mercy. Oh, the mercy. Oh, oh, the mercy. Brother Mark's the complications. Oh, oh, the conviction. Oh, the consecration. Oh, oh, the consecration. Oh, the commitments. Come on. Oh, the failures. Oh, no, no, not the failures. Oh, the forgiveness. Oh, the faith. Come on, lift your hands and cry out to God. Come on, pray right now. They're singing. Come on, I'm finished. Lift your voice right now. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. You can. 
overcomer. Place. I feel victory in this place. rising in here. I'm leaving the failures in the fish. Whatever the fish represents, the last six months, the last six years, I'm leaving the failures in the fish. I'm leaving the failures. Go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. Don't stop. Don't stop. Go ahead, mama. Go, 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 go. I'm leaving the failures in the fish. Are you ready? Anybody ready to give him? I'm leaving a fa the failures in the fish praise. Are you ready? You gotta let the devil hear you. You gotta let the past hear you. You gotta reach for the future. Are you ready? Go. Come on, go. Come on, reach. Where's it at? Come on. Come on, reach. Reach. I believe in the failure. Shake it off, 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 shake it off. Somebody needs to go. Shake it off. Come on, pastors already admonish you. You better shake it off. The failures of yesterday. The failures of your past. 
Every chain, brother! Every chain, brother! Come on! Higher, 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 hig